Hello and welcome to another installment of Impossible Architecture. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Detroit Federal Building and Post Office. Magnificent structure. I found an article on Det historicdetroit.org on this structure. Uh, only stood for 34 years. And I'll just read you some of this paragraph. Today, photos of the building often drop the jaws of those who have never seen it. Uh, Detroit historian Will William Hawkins Ferry called it one of the most outstanding monuments of the Romanesque revival in Detroit, literally dominating the northwest corner of Shelby and West Forest, Fort Streets. Everything about it was huge. Its 243-foot clock tower soared over everything else in the city for several decades. It could be seen from the outside of downtown. Detroiters would enter under enormous arched entrances and peer out from its giant windows. And before we get to a few more of the visuals, let's take a look at some of the build process. Uh, they say, oddly, the building had no cornerstone. Uh, the basement's foundation was made of granite and the superstructure of Bedford limestone. Walls of the basement were an incredible 48 inches thick. Uh, and the stones were quarried from a prison in Joliet, Illinois. You get the picture anyway. This thing is a behemoth. We have an architect here, James W. Windrum. Or James H. Windrum, sorry. Here he is here. Um, if you do a quick search on the gentleman, you really only get these two pictures of him. Um, responsible for building this beautiful structure here as well in Philadelphia. And like a lot of these architects are basically ghosts as far as the personal life goes and the visual evidence of them but they many of these spectacular structures are attributed to um, them and they kind of disappear into time and just to give you a sample of some of the structures this gentleman was supposedly responsible for designing here's the uh, um, architect or agricultural built hall in uh, in Philadelphia from the 1876 World's Fair. So you get an idea of uh, the old world structures. Again, I think what we're looking at is a uh, the attribution of uh, old world structures to a single person. So this was completed in 1898, and they ended up tearing it down in. 1931. As you look at some of these visuals, I want you to imagine. Do you, do you really think this only stood for 30 plus years? Or do you think that there may be a problem with the timeline, the historical timeline? You can see here, again, uh, a lower level around the outside of the building being fenced off. But this is a this is an enormous structure, and uh, certainly something that would have been celebrated during the construction process. Even here, you have an arch going below ground, which makes very little sense um, if we are going to uh, use the given historical narrative. This is on the, honestly, this is a very difficult to wrap your head around. Just like the article says. Very difficult to uh, envision why they would build in such a manner. You can see the gargoyles coming off the tower here. Something that you'll see in um, what what we call medieval France or England, and uh, what would often be attributed to being uh, six, seven hundred years old. But uh, not in this case. This is apparently only a thirty-year-old building. Only lasted thirty years. So um, what do you think? Do you think we're looking at something that uh, that was around a lot longer and was uh, hastily demolished once the technology became available to do so? Here's a nice shot of the uh, entryway. The enormosity of the entryway. You can see the uh, lady here looking up. You have to wonder what goes through her head there. And they have a bit of debris and rubble going on in some of these shots you're going to see. And I don't know if they're trying to say it's a renovation or reconstruction um, or original construction. 
and get a sense of the size of the stones here that had to be laid. The uh, classic uh, workers with overalls on, looking clueless. Um, do you think these people had a hand in building this? Hmm, I have my doubts, folks, as you know. And the purpose of this video is really to catalog the building itself and a bit of the process and to share that with people who either have never seen it before or find it interesting. Here we have a, uh, um, a temporary tower built next to the uh, permanent tower. And you can see how complicated the cribbing, um, the diagonal cribbing would have to be for this, um, this tower to stand at such a height. So you have to imagine this going on all around this building, the amount of lumber that would have been needed. Certainly somebody would have found it um, necessary to take a photograph just for the sake of uh, record keeping. I have a couple more photographs for you again here, just looking like some sort of uh, after the fact renovation. We've got some I beams coming through here, looking, looking like they're covering up over the old openings. And then they're on top of that platform here. So again, um, builders such as this responsible for this structure back here. I don't mean to be judgmental, but I, I severely doubt that's the case. We have a couple interior shots here. Shadowy trench coat figure on the inside here. I don't know. What do you think? And then supposedly a construction photo. I uh, remember I showed you the, the cribbing on that tower here. And then we have Supposedly this is for the construction of the building, um, looking like they're in the process of finishing much of this, so I, don't know, I highly doubt highly doubt this is a legitimate photograph. Here we have a couple gentlemen standing on the front. Not sure what to make of it, but certainly I don't trust it. And a before and after we have what it once looked like and what it looks like nowadays. So. That's the Detroit Federal Building and Post Office. Thanks for joining me.